Hi everybody, welcome to Tune Talk. This month we'll be talking about the tune Morella's Lesson. We were traveling through Massachusetts and we passed through a small town called Shelburne Falls. Through the middle of town runs the Deerfield River and over that river are several bridges and in the springtime they are filled with flowers and they call it the Bridge of Flowers and it's very lovely. We were just kind of wandering around in town and came upon a bookstore called Nancy Dole Books. This is a thing that we love to do on while we're on tour. It's not only visiting places, but one, searching for really good coffee, which we did find there, and two, is looking for unique bookstores. The place was filled with books and papers and photographs. In the store, uh, she had all of this ephemera, and and she said, well, if you're interested in music, I have some music books over there. It was as though the clouds parted and through the window shone a beam of light onto this book. <laughs> How's School for the Fife, published in 1851. It seemed like it was written for you. It does. Mm. I'm a how. And in this book, there are many wonderful tunes, including... Morella's Lesson. As I mentioned at that time, neither of us read music, but I found this book to be the inspiration I needed to learn that skill. And since then, you've actually started to learn yourself. Yeah, I've managed to take little nibbles of it and not cry <laughs> out of frustration, which has been a thing that's followed me probably since I was seven, six, seven years old. I was asked to leave orchestra because uh, I had already had success in learning by ear. And so I just thought I could do everything by ear. And uh, eventually I was just, I was, I was told that it wasn't a good fit for me. Well, in orchestra, learning by ear would be considered a Paganono. <laughs> <laughs> good one. How's School for the Fife was published in 1851, and it was one of a series of books uh, released by Elias Howe, born 1820. He produced books for a plethora of instruments, and these books all contained uh, jigs, reels, hornpipes, and marches. These books eventually funneled into what was later to become Ryan's Mammoth Collection, published in 1883. The plates were purchased by M.M. M. Cole in Chicago and released in the 1930s as Cole's 1000 Fiddle Tunes. The tune Morella's Lesson is known in the shape note singing world as Murillo's Lesson. It's the same tune with a slightly different spelling of the name. The question is, what does the name Morella's Lesson mean? There is a short blurb in one of the shape note singing books claiming that it might come from a composer named Morelli, but it offers no proof and no evidence of that. And I have my own theory without proof or evidence that I would like to put forward at this point. And that is that the tune title references the 17th century nun Juliana Morel, or Juliana Morella, who was from Barcelona, Spain. Juliana, she was born in Barcelona and she was left motherless at a very young age. She was a prodigy and by the age of four she began learning Greek, Latin, and Hebrew under these teachers. When Juliana's father was accused of murder, they fled to the south of France where she continued her studies. She later in life became the prioress at a convent. She then ushered in an era of learning in the world of the nuns. The more we talk about this in relation to Juliana Morel, 
the less I feel like it actually does relate to her, but the more interested I become in her as a person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And that's what Tune Talks are all about. And I think that's all the time we have today on Tune Talk. Thanks so much for tuning in to Tune Talk. We hope you tune in next time for Tune Talk, where the talk is always in tune, on the tune, and about the tune. All right. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>